Hello! Welcome to my channel, my name is Jay, and this is my series Unknown Animals, where we explore species not well known by the general public. Today we'll dive into the spookiest animal so far, the painted bat. The painted bat, also known as Caravula picta, is a species of Vesper bat. Vesper bats, or Vespertilianidae, are a family of insectivorous microbats. Vesper bats roughly make up one-fourth of all the bat species on Earth. Inside this family is Caravula, the genus of woolly bats, and is the genus of today's subject. Caravula is quite a large genus, with over 18 species sharing it. For contrast, the average for species assigned for a mammal genus is 4.4. There is quite a lot of diversity between species as well. Some have white fur, some have red, some brown, and even one with orange. But one thing that stays consistent is their small size, relatively similar body plan, and barely visible eyes. Even the closest relative to the painted bat, the Smith's woolly bat, looks nothing like it. To the untrained eye, one looks indistinguishable from other bats, while the other looks like it bought the battle pass. The painted bat, like its name infers, looks as if someone painted an ordinary bat with the spooky colors of Halloween. Oh my god. They are bright orange with black wings and orange along their fingers. Like many other species within its genus, they possess long curly hair and naked funnel-like ears. Painted bats are a medium-sized bat with a wingspan of 18 to 30 centimeters or 7 to 12 inches. Their body length is between 3 to 5.5 centimeters with their tail length being about the same. These animals weigh about 5 grams. Which is absurd because, as a snake owner, the 5 grammed mice that I feed to my snake looks to only be a fraction of the size of this animal. This goes to show how these animals evolved to be as light as possible, and why their metabolism is so high. Despite what Google will tell you, the painted bat has two subspecies. Though, I could not find any reports or studies on them that differentiates the two subspecies besides geographic differences. These subspecies are Caravula picta picta, and Caravula picta bellissimus. The size, coloration, and behavioral differences of these subspecies are not well known, like at all. Perhaps these studies exist, but as far as publicly available information goes, there is virtually nothing. However, we do know where these subspecies are located, like bellissimus is endemic to China. Paulus's range, however, is far more widespread, inhabiting southern and eastern India, Sri Lanka, Malay, Indonesia, Bangladesh, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand, and Vietnam. Echolocation in painted bats, much like many other bats, is an important feature that allows them to sense their prey's location. Though I could not find any sources saying that they had bad vision, I imagine having eyes smaller than a bead isn't ideal for finding prey. Painted bats utilize broadband calls. Broadband calls are calls that sweep a large range of frequencies. This is the opposite of narrowband calls, which stay on a consistent frequency. Narrowband calls are often used by bats that inhabit open environments like fields and towns, whereas broadband calls are more effective in cluttered environments. In this instance, jungles. These calls are important for interpreting distance, size, shape, and even texture of an object. Which is kind of absurd. Imagine being able to tell whether something is soft, hard, sharp, or fluffy just by screeching at it. Painted bats are nocturnal and crepuscular. They will gather in pairs or small groups of six. These animals are often found in unusual roosting sites such as suspended nests of weaver finches and sunbirds, banana tree leaves, and even one specimen was retrieved from the inside of a cow shed. Much like other bats, they stay hidden during the day when they're sleeping. They're quite sluggish when disturbed, which might be why there are so many videos of them just sleeping. Aww. It is thought that the bright contrasting coloration of these bats may be a form of camouflage to help them blend in with dried leaves and flowers when they roost. Individuals will change the location in which they roost every one to four days. New roosting sites are usually within one kilometer of the last one. They form family units consisting of a mother, a father, and an offspring, and breed between June and August. Female bats give birth to one offspring at a time. Younger bats tend to get a new mate every year, while older bats 
hunker down, pairing with the same mate every year. Sort of like humans. These bats were first discovered by none other than the famous Prussian zoologist Peter Simon Paulus in 1767. This is the same time period that Frederick the Great lived. You may have heard of other animals that have been described by him, like the Paulus viper, the Paulus glass lizard, and most famously, these cats that look like they lack the ability to feel happy. Painted bats prefer wet environments, and on average, hunt for an hour or two a day. Due to how slowly they flap their wings, their flight pattern often gets compared to that of a moth. This allows them to make agile maneuvers that couldn't be done otherwise. These creatures have a large interformal membrane. This is an adaptation common with bats that catch their food in the air. That is because they will use this membrane to catch and hold their prey until they can kill and eat them. These little guys feast on small invertebrates, but based on the fecal pellets that have been analyzed, they seem to prefer web-building spiders. Not much is known about their predators, but I am sure, like many other bats, their threats come in the form of anything that could catch them in the air or sneak up to them when they're roosting. Painted bats were last seen in Bangladesh in 1888, and in 2015, the Forest Department of Bangladesh declared the painted bat to be data deficient. At this point, they were commonly acknowledged to be extinct in the area, until over 133 years after the last sighting in Bangladesh in 2021, these bats were seen again. Unfortunately, this species faces a threat that no animal on Earth seems to be able to escape. Humans. These bats have been yoinked out of their habitat in the hundreds and possibly even thousands every year. They are then sold as ornaments online. Most of them are either sold in frames or in coffins priced between $20 to $160. Others, however, are presented in a much more unusual fashion to say the very least. Necklaces, combs, and even lace garters. Most of these creatures are sold to buyers in the US. This issue has worsened in recent years. In 2019 alone, the IUCN Red List moved the painted bats from least concerned to near threatened. And now many people are trying to push for them to be upgraded to endangered, due to the fact that they only average one offspring a year and have an average lifespan of five years. This means that if you are a female bat that can find a mate and consistently produce an offspring every year, and assuming all of your babies somehow survive into adulthood, you would still only be bringing in five bats into the world throughout your entire lifespan. As I said, receiving the status upgrade to endangered may very well help cement their protection internationally. You see, once a species is declared to be officially endangered, they may then be protected under the ESA or CITES, limiting or completely prohibiting the importing, exporting, selling, buying, possessing, and even transporting of such species. This is more of a side note, but when I was looking through GBIF to view all of the specimens, where they were collected and where they are now, I had realized that there was a specimen collected in North Africa. This was strange. What is this Asian species of bat doing in Africa, and how did it get there? So I started digging. I immediately went back to GBIF, and I found the location of the bat today. Today it lies in Harvard's Museum of Comparative Zoology. I then checked the museum's database. There I confirmed the specimen was collected in North Africa, and indeed was wild caught. So I gathered the specimen's information, and promptly contacted a researcher from the museum. But this is Harvard we're talking about, and I am just an average Joe, with no degrees and no certifications, so I did not expect a response. Then, the following week, I looked into my email, and to my delight, I was greeted with a reply stating not only did they find the specimen, not only were they going to look into it, but they were going to take high quality pictures to send to me. He informed me that the specimen had been confirmed to be care of Lepicta due to the brain being extracted, which is apparently what had been used to identify this creature. Turns out, whenever I was originally overviewing the specimen's data profile, I had missed an important information box stating that the specimen was bought of Edward. This was an obvious contradiction to the collection source, which was stating that this animal was wild caught. I let the researcher know, and he fixed it immediately. So, rather than flying 4,000 miles from Asia all the way to Northern Africa, it was likely captured in Asia in the early 1900s, and later sold to a collector, and shipped to Harvard's Museum of Comparative Zoology, where it has been since. Despite the origin of the specimen not being as interesting as it could have been, 
I still ended up with some pretty cool pictures of these guys I would not have gotten if I hadn't inquired. As you can see, this is clearly a painted bat, as it has the orange body and black wings indicative of Caravula picta. Not just a brain was extracted, but the skull as well. This aids in understanding the dental structure, like how many teeth a species has. In this instance, 38. You can even compare the skull to other members of the Caravula genus to see the differences. Well, this is the end of the video. Thank you guys for 100 subscribers. My next video will be the start of a new series. I'm calling it Archaic Animals. This is a series where we will explore extinct animals. If you have any suggestions for either series, please comment them below. Thank you for watching and have an absolute wonderful rest of your day.